Hey there, tech fans. Rick here from the O-Ray team with an overview of the UHD EXP 330AUR-K HDMI extender kit. This product makes it very simple for you to share any 4K ultra high definition media content you have with a second location in your home up to 328 feet or 100 meters away over a single Cat 6A or Cat 7 cable. The product also employs the very latest in HD based T technology, which means you'll get the best possible picture and audio at that second location. The system also supports extending the LAN between those locations, as well as sending the infrared remote control signals from your secondary location all the way back to the primary location over that same wire so you can actually control the media content you're watching. In addition to that, the system supports audio extraction at the sender module, which separates the audio and video from the HDMI stream you're watching and allows you to send that audio to a home stereo system for better quality audio. The last feature, which is pretty incredible, is the product can also support PC connections between the two. It'll extend USB connections, which means you can have a mouse and keyboard installed at the secondary location that's actually controlling a computer at your primary location. So all those features together make this an incredibly nice product. Now, as part of this overview, I'd like to start with an unboxing of the product just to show you all of the components that come with the kit. Then I'll spend a few minutes explaining the different video and audio standards the product can support. And then I'll take a closer look at all of the components individually to explain the indicators, buttons, and knobs. And then finally, I'll come back and do an installation right here of the product to show you just how simple it'll be to install it with your own equipment at home. So let's get started with the unboxing. When you open up the box, you'll find a few components, the sender module, the receiver module, a set of infrared blasters for the receiver, another set for the sending module, and sticky tabs that you can actually attach those to your components. We also include a set of brackets that allow you to mount the unit to the bottom of a desk or a wall nearby to get it up and out of the way. We also include RS-232 connectors where you can transmit RS-232 signals across that same wire. We include a power supply, and because it's using HD based T technology, you only need one power supply because that same power is going to be sent across that wire. So you can connect that up at the sender or the receiver module. And then lastly, a full instruction manual that gives you diagrams for connection, answers any questions you have, and gives you information on how you can get a hold of us if you've got any questions about the product. Now, if you stay tuned, I'll explain some of the audio and video standards of product and support, and then we'll take a closer look at the components. The O-Ray UHD EXP 330AUR-K supports a wide range of media products, including streaming devices like Roku, home surveillance systems, game consoles, DVD players, and cable boxes. The product can transmit all modern audio and video standards, including video resolutions up to 4K at 60 Hz, and it's HDCP 1.4 and 2.2, as well as DVI 1.0 compliant. The audio standards include LPCM 2.0, 2.1, 5.1, 6.1, and 7.1 channel, Dolby Digital, Dolby Digital Plus, Dolby True HD, DTS ES, DTS HD Master, DTS HD HRA, and DTS X. Included with the kit is a sender module, a receiver module, two infrared blasters that are used with each of the modules to extend the infrared signals from the secondary location back to the primary. Also included are sticky pads to attach these to the components, two sets of brackets to be able to mount the sender and receiver module up off the ground, either the bottom of a desk or a wall nearby, two RS-232 connections to make it easy to connect up RS-232 signals to the back of the unit, a single power supply, and a full instruction manual that lists diagrams and specifications and answers any questions you may have about the unit. Now we'll take a closer look at some of the components that are included with the kit and we'll start with the infrared blasters. The product comes with two sets of infrared blasters, one for the sender and one for the receiver, and each of these pairs includes both an infrared receiver, which is the larger one, and an infrared transmitter, and it's important you plug these in into the right ports on both of the modules. So the infrared receiver gets plugged into the infrared in, and the infrared transmitter gets plugged into the infrared out. And this is what's responsible for sending the infrared signals from that secondary site all the way back to the primary site through that single connection between them. Also included with the kit is a power supply. It's a pretty standard 24 volt DC power supply. This end gets plugged into the wall. This barrel connection can plug into the back of either of these modules. And again, because we're using HD base T technology, that same power connection will be transmitted across that single wire to power up both of the modules. Both the sender and receiver modules feature full metal enclosures, which not only makes them extremely durable, but also helps to reduce the amount of outside interference from possibly affecting the sensitive electronics inside. 
On the front of the sender module, there are three LEDs on the left-hand side. The first is a power indicator. The minute you connect power up to the sender module or the receiver module and make the connection between them, that will light up, indicating valid power on both modules. To the right of that is an ARC indicator. If that function is enabled, that'll light up. To the right of that is an SPDIF indicator. If you connect up digital audio to the modules, once you make that connection, that'll come on. To the right of that is a USB host port. Because this uses HD-based T technology, which can not only transfer audio and video streams, as well as infrared and power, it can also transfer USB signals, so you could effectively connect the computer up at the primary location to this port, and control it by connecting a mouse and a keyboard up at the remote site. To the right of that is a switch that allows you to choose between the two audio output options. The product can do audio extraction, and you can output that audio to your home stereo through either left and right analog or SP diff. That switch will allow you to select between those two. To the right of that is a service port. That's used to push new firmware to the product if needed later on. On the bottom of the unit, plenty of venting holes to keep the sensitive electronics inside at a comfortable temperature. Mounting holes for the brackets that allow you to mount this to the bottom of a desk or a nearby wall. On the back of the unit, Power supply connection here, and again, you can connect the power supply up at either the sender or receiver module. Once that connection's made, that's enough power for everything. But basically, you'll insert the barrel connection here and tighten the collar. To the left of that is the HD base T connection. Now, there are two LAN connections on the back of this. It's really important that the interconnect between these two, again, a CAT 6A or CAT 7, connects up to the HD base T connection here, and the same on the receiver module. To the left of that is the HDMI input port. That's connected to your media source, so if it's a DVD player or media player, it connects up there. Infrared blaster connections, infrared in, infrared out. To the left of that is the two audio connections, either left and right analog output or the SP diff output. RS-232 connections, in case you want to transfer those signals across that same wire. And finally, the LAN connection. And again, hd based T technology will allow you to extend your LAN connection from the primary site to the secondary site just by connecting up there. On the receiver, very similar indicators on the front. Power, ARC, SP diff, same as on the sender module. To the right of that, two full-size USB-A connections. Again, it can be a mouse and a keyboard that allows you to control the computer that's plugged into the port over there. Same audio selection switch, same service port. On the bottom, plenty of venting holes, two mounting holes for the brackets. On the back of the unit, you have the choice to connect the power supply up here, or if you have it at the sender side, this will stay open. HD base T connection here. Again, that LAN cable between them connects here. HDMI output port, that connects to the monitor at your secondary location. Two infrared blaster connections, infrared in, infrared out. SP diff connection, RS-232 connection if you're transferring those signals between them. And then finally, the LAN connection, which allows you to extend that LAN to the secondary location. Now I'll show you the connections you'll need to make to get this product working with your own equipment at home. And for this demonstration, on this side of the table, I'm simulating the primary location in your home. It's wherever you're enjoying the content today that you'd like to share with that second location. On this side of the table, I'm simulating that second location, which is typically an upstairs bedroom, or maybe it's downstairs in a den. It's somewhere within 100 meters of the primary location where you'd like to enjoy that content. I have the sender module here, the receiver module here, and I've set up a small monitor with a media player down there looping a video that I'll actually send across this network to show you how this works. Now the first connection I'll make is to the sender module. I'll disconnect my media source from the monitor and connect it up to the HDMI input port in the back of the sender module. Now on the receiver module, I'll connect up the monitor in that second location. I've got an HDMI cable plugged into it, and that gets connected to the HDMI output on the receiver module. The next connection you'll make is the network connection between them, and you'll need to use a very high quality cable. Typically a CAT 6A or CAT 7 would work fine, and I've got a small spool here of 100 feet of CAT 6A. Now again, you can go 100 meters away with that secondary location, but using a high quality cable ensures you're going to get the best possible picture and audio to that secondary location. And also it can be a little confusing because on the back of the module, Modules, you'll see two connections that are LAN connections. You'll want to use the HD base T connection on the back of this, and that's the network that connects between them. I'll explain what that LAN connection is used for in a bit. So let me connect up the CAT 6A to the receiver, and I'll connect it up to the HD base T connector on the back of the sender module. Okay, now that the network's connected, all I have to do is apply power. And because we're using an HD based T technology, I can put power on either side because it's transmitted across that same network connection along with the audio and the video. So for simplicity, I'll connect it up to the primary side here at the sender. And I've already plugged it in. I've got a barrel connection. Gets plugged right into the back of the unit. And the minute I do that and tighten it up, you'll notice immediately both of the power LEDs came on. And what's happening right now is both of these modules are going through a power on self-test. So 
on the sender side. It's checking to make sure the electronics are working okay. It's also checking the resolution of whatever I've got connected to it. In this case, it's the media player to make whatever adjustments are needed to send the best possible video and audio across the connection. On the receiver side, it's doing the same thing where it's going through a power on self-test and it's checking the resolution of the monitor to make sure it can make adjustments for whatever audio and video is being sent here to give you the best possible picture. And there you go, that's the same video we were looking at over there a second ago. Now, a few other connections you may want to make, because the unit's got some pretty sophisticated features. The first one has to do with that second connection I talked about before, the LAN connection. You can actually connect up the sender side to a LAN connection or to a computer and send that information to the secondary side. So the LAN connection can be extended through the HD base T connection as well. The last connection you want to make has to do with the IR blasters. Now, I mentioned before that you can transmit the infrared signals from that secondary location back to the primary location to control the media that you're watching. And there are two modules for the sender and receiver side. The larger module is the receiver. That gets plugged into the IR in on the back of this. And the smaller one is the transmitter. It gets plugged into the IR out. And what you'll do is point your remote control here at the receiver. It'll actually transmit those infrared signals across the wire and broadcast them out of the sender module over here to whatever you're trying to control. So it's really nice that you can sort of stop and fast forward the media you're watching from that secondary location. One other feature that's really impressive is you can actually connect the computer up through the USB connection on this side right here, and then you can connect up a mouse and a keyboard on this side and actually control the computer at that primary location from your secondary location. And again, that's all done through the HD base T connection. So it's a very sophisticated system, but with a few simple connections, you can get it working in your own home, and it really is just that easy. We hope you found this overview helpful. The O-Ray UHD EXP 330AUR-K HDMI extender kit really is the perfect way of sharing any 4K ultra high definition media content you have with a second location in your home up to 328 feet or 100 meters away over a single CAT 6A or CAT 7 cable. The fact that it also supports HD based T technology means you can use that same connection to share infrared remote control signals, extend the LAN, transfer power between the two modules, and also extend USB connections to a PC you may be using. Now, if you have any questions about anything we've covered today, please check the FAQ on our website or use the Contact Us link to send us a note and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. Until next time, thanks again for watching.